this series of lectures we shall be discussing power flow studies the first lecture discusses introduction to power flow studies this lecture has been conceived and prepared by professor r s tare and ms richa dikshit let us first enlist the objectives of this lecture the first objective is to give a brief history of electrical power systems the second objective is to understand the problems associated with operation of interconnected ac power system the next objective is to know a bit about earlier approaches of handling these problems the fourth objective is to elaborate a bit the present load flow or power flow approach now we will dig into past and try to understand the brief history of electrical power systems in earlier days electricity was produced using chemical batteries this was quite expensive and had very limited applications this scene changed when edison invented the carbon filament lamp edison wanted to sell his lamps but it was quite expensive to use these lamps with chemical batteries therefore he started looking for electrical power production in commercial ways in the year 1882 edison established the first commercial electrical power plant at park street in new york city this electrical power plant was driven by steam engines he used dc generators that produced electrical power at 110 volt dc it is quite natural the question arises why electrical power was produced in dc form most probably the answer may be the concept of electrical power was originated with batteries and in dc form in that era the generated power with the help of dc generator was distributed for illumination purpose over distribution lines since there was a voltage drop that is ir drop along the distribution lines this restricted the length over which power that could be transmitted to about 1.6 kilometers edison's venture was a grand success and many such ventures came up in america and in europe soon the importance of electrical power was realized in industries also and industries started using this dc power same time tesla was working on alternating currents the invention of transformer and induction motor by tesla encourage generation of electrical power in ac form the main factors that influence this were transformers are static machines transformers can be used for raising and lowering ac voltages very efficiently thus ac power can be generated at remote locations raise the voltage using transformers transmit power over long distances efficiently as current needed to transmit same power at more voltage was less at receiving end the voltage can be lowered again using transformers to level suitable for the user thus transmission of electrical power 
can be made more efficient. The voltage drop problem also got reduced as current over transmission line was less. Transformer taps supported easy maintenance of voltages at consumer end. DC motors are expensive, bulky, less efficient and need regular maintenance. On the contrary, if AC supply is used, induction motor is very economic, compact and needs little maintenance. The advantages of electrical power in AC form prompted generation, transmission and distribution of electrical power in AC form. The electrical power industry shifted from DC to AC system. The competition amongst power industries forced the engineers to make this industry work in more economical and reliable manner. This aspect required operation of multiple synchronous machines to run in synchronism. In turn, a new problem surfaced named power system stability. When synchronous machines were connected in parallel, this resulted in what we call as interconnected power systems. Calculating fault currents in these interconnected power systems was a critical issue. This was essential as it could enable designing a protection system and setting up various relays for ensuring reliable operation of power systems. To address such issues, engineers started applying different approaches that could solve these problems. Initially, DC calculating boards were used with very limited applications. Later, AC calculating boards were applied. Again, these also had very limited applications. In 1950s, digital computers were available for making computations. With the advent of digital computers, mathematical algorithms were applied to solve the problems associated with operation of power systems. Today, most sophisticated computers are being used for monitoring and solving power system problems online and offline. Now, we will try to have an introduction of power flow problem. Power flow is also called load flow. This is simply the mathematical solution of power system network. One can feel the importance of power flow in power system studies from the following statement. Power flow is the bread and butter of power systems engineers. We know very well power system networks are electrical networks. Since closed form solutions are available for solving electrical network problems, why we are talking so much about power flow? Consider a case of general power system. If we look around our own installation, we find almost 80% of the loads is induction motor load. What is so special about induction motors? Let us first consider the case of a load having constant impedance as shown in the figure. V is the RMS value of supply voltage. Z equal to R plus Jx is the impedance of the load. Let us calculate the magnitude of current supplied by the source to load. This can be given as I equal to 
v upon square root of r square plus x square. Now we will have an attempt for calculating the real power consumed by the load. This can be given by real power consumed P equal to I square R. R is the resistive part of the load impedance. Making a substitution for current I, we get real power consumed by load P equal to V square upon R square plus X square multiplied by R. This equation is quite important. Looking at this expression for power, it is observed that if impedance is kept constant, the power consumed by load is proportional to square of the applied voltage. Now we can have an important conclusion about constant impedance load. Thus, for a constant impedance load, the power consumed by this load is proportional to square of the voltage applied. In the next attempt, we will consider the case of an induction motor load. The torque speed characteristics for an induction motor at different armature voltages and a common load are shown in the diagram. On the x-axis we have plotted speed and on the y-axis we have plotted the developed torque of the motor. When an RMS voltage of V1 is applied across the armature, the torque speed characteristic for this induction motor is shown in the diagram. The starting torque, the pull out torque and the torque at the synchronous speed are shown. In the next step, a voltage V2 is applied across the armature of the same induction motor. V2 is such that V2 is greater than V1. The effect of increased armature voltage can be easily visualized on the torque speed characteristic. Starting torque has been increased, pull out torque has also been increased, but the synchronous speed remains the same because synchronous speed is the function of frequency and not of the amplitude of applied voltage. The torque developed at the synchronous speed remains zero as in the past case. Repeat this exercise again by applying a voltage V3. V3 is greater than V2 greater than V1. The new torque speed characteristic has been shown in violet color. It can be easily seen. The starting torque has been increased again. The pull out torque is again increased. But as in the past, synchronous speed remains same. The torque at the synchronous speed remains again at zero. Now we will consider the load. It is interesting to see how the torque requirement of a common load varies if the speed driving that load changes. The characteristic shown in green color shows this particular aspect. It can be easily seen for most of the common loads the requirement of torque hardly changes with change in speed. We are typically interested in conceptualizing how the change in armature voltage affects the speed at which motor and load are driven, the torque which is delivered to the load and the real power delivered to the load. For understanding of this particular issue, we have taken the small portion of the torque speed characteristics of the induction motor and that of load where they are intersecting with each other. The same small portion has been shown in a magnified way on the diagram. Let us locate the point of intersection of 
torque speed characteristic of the load and the torque speed characteristic of the induction motor for applied voltage V1. The point of intersection is characterized by speed omega 1 and the torque delivered T1. Now repeat the same exercise for applied voltage V2. It can be easily seen the motor and load combination rotates at speed omega 2 and the torque delivered to the load is T2. Again repeat the same exercise for applied voltage V3. The load and motor combination rotates at speed omega 3 and torque delivered to the load is T3. There are two important observations about this small portion of the characteristics. The first observation, the torque speed characteristic of load around point of intersections is nearly flat or horizontal. The next observation, the torque speed characteristics of the motor around point of intersections are nearly vertical. It can be easily seen that change in armature voltage causes negligible change in speed that is omega 1, omega 2 and omega 3 are almost same. Again it can be easily seen that change in armature voltage causes negligible change in the torque delivered to the load that is T1, T2 and T3 are almost same. This means with change in armature voltage the real power output of the motor delivered to the load that is omega into T remains nearly constant. This leads to following statement. Therefore, induction motors are called constant power machines that deliver constant real power to load irrespective of applied voltage in limited range. Now the important question is how does this matter to us? For electrical networks where passive elements are specified as impedances or admittances, the solution of network is available in close form as vector equation V equal to Zi and vector equation I equal to Yv. Here V is the vector of voltages, I is the vector of currents, Z is the impedance matrix and Y is the admittance matrix. But we have seen in power systems loads are specified as constant power and not as impedances or admittances. We now will try to see how this affects this solution process. Consider a simple case of DC power network as shown in the diagram. A source of 1 volt delivering power to a load at node 1 of 1 watt through a transmission line having the resistance of 0 0.1 ohm. Our objective shall be to calculate the value of node voltage V1. The current I1 can be calculated as I1 equal to 1 minus V1 divided by 0 0.1. The power coming out of this node 1 is 1 watt and this can be written as V1 into I1 equal to 1 watt. Substituting the value for I1 we get V1 into 1 minus V1 upon 0 0.1 equal to 1. Simplifying this equation we get V1 square minus V1 plus 0 
equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation rather than a linear one and can be solved for a closed form solution. Let us add one more node as shown in the figure. This node is connected to previous node through a transmission line having a resistance of 0 0.2 ohms. The new node is delivering power to the load of 0 0.5 watt. As the solution of this network, values of V1 and V2 are to be determined. Using Kirchhoff's current law at node 1, the current supplied to 1 watt load can be determined as 1 minus V1 upon 0 0.1 plus V2 minus V1 upon 0 0.2. This causes load power of 1 watt. Therefore, 1 minus V1 upon 0 0.1 plus V2 minus V1 upon 0 0.2 multiplied by V1 equal to 1 watt. Simplifying this equation, we get 15 V1 square minus 5 V1 V2 minus 10 V1 plus 1 equal to 0. This is the equation for node 1. Now, calculate the current delivered to load at node 2. This can be determined as V1 minus V2 divided by 0 0.2 amperes. The power delivered with this current to load is 0 0.5 watts. The power delivered to load at node 2 is 0.5 watt and can be obtained as the current delivered through node 2 multiplied by the voltage of node 2 that is V2. Mathematically, this can be written as V1 minus V2 upon 0 0.2 multiplied by V2 equal to 0 0.5. Simplifying this equation, we get 5 V2 square minus 5 V1 V2 plus 0 0.5 equal to 0. This equation is written for node 2. Thus, now we are having two quadratic equations with V1 and V2 as unknowns. Thus, if loads are specified as constant power in electrical network, the solution process involves solving nonlinear simultaneous equations. No closed form solution is available for such problems. One has to resort to iterative methods like Gauss-Seidel or Newton-Raphson methods to solve such equations. The practical power networks are AC networks. Loads and generations are specified as real power and reactive power. We have to calculate the magnitudes and phases of different node or bus voltages and their phases. The process of calculating bus voltages and their phases for electrical power network is called power flow or load flow. Let us recap this lecture. In this lecture, we have learned why loads in power system are specified as constant power, how the solution process becomes complicated if loads are specified as constant power. We have defined load flow problem in preliminary way.